President Wilfred Woodruff once had a remarkable experience to which I would like to refer. <clears throat> he first publicly mentioned the incident at General Conference in Oct October of 1880. Sixteen years later, he gave further details in a discourse delivered at the Weber State Conference, and his remarks were published in the Deseret Weekly. In the 1880 conference, President Woodruff told of dreams he had had after the death of the prophet Joseph Smith, in which he conversed with the prophet many times. Then he related another dream in which he talked with Brigham Young, and this is what he said about it. I saw Brother Brigham and Brother Heber ride in a carriage ahead of the carriage in which I rode when I was on my way to attend conference, and they were dressed in the most priestly robes. When we arrived at our destination, I asked President Young if he would preach to us. He said, No, I have finished my testimony in the flesh. I shall not talk to this people any more. But, said he, I have come, come to see you. I have come to watch over you and to see what the people are doing. Then said he, I want you to teach the people, and I want you to follow this counsel yourself, that they must labor and so live as to obtain the Holy Spirit. For without this you cannot build up the kingdom. Without the Spirit of God you are in danger of walking in the dark and in danger of failing to accomplish your calling as apostles and as elders in the Church and Kingdom of God. And said he, Brother Joseph taught me this principle. President Woodruff then on, went on to say of that experience as he spoke at the Weber State Conference, essentially what I want to say today. Every man and woman in this Church should labor to get that spirit. We are surrounded by these evil spirits that are at war against God and against everything looking to the building up of the Kingdom of God. And we need this Holy Spirit to enable us to overcome these influences. Continuing his discourse, President Woodruff told of his missionary experiences. He said, In the time of the apostasy in Kirkland, the Spirit of God said to me, You choose a partner and go straight to Fox Islands. Well, I knew, of no, I knew no more what was on Fox Islands than I did what was on Kolob. But the Lord told me to go, and I went. I chose Jonathan H. Hale, and he went with me. Through the blessings of God, I brought nearly a hundred from there up to Zion at the time the saints were driven out of Missouri into Illinois. So it has been through, all through my life. If I, have under, if I have undertaken to do anything, and the Lord has wanted me to go to do something else, He has had to tell me. When we were sent to England, we were sent by revelation. I went to the Staffordshire Potteries with Brother Alfred Corden. We were doing a splendid work, baptizing almost every night, and I thought it was the finest mission I ever was on. I went into the town of Hanley one night and attended meeting in a large hall which was filled to overflowing. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me and said, that that was the last meeting I should hold with that people for many days. I told the people that that was the last meeting I should be with them. After the meeting, they asked me where I was going. I told them that I did not know. In the morning, I asked the Lord what He wanted of me. He merely said, Go to the south. I got into the stage and rode 80 miles. The first man's house I stopped at was John Ben Bowes in Herefordshire. An hour and a half after I entered the house, I knew exactly why the Lord had sent me. There was a people there who had been praying for the ancient order of things. They were waiting for the gospel as it was taught by Christ and His apostles. The consequence was 
The first 30 days after I got there, I baptized 600 of those people. In eight months' labor in that country, I brought 1,800 into the church. Why? Because there was a people prepared for the gospel, and the Lord sent me there to do that work. I have always had to give God the glory for everything good that has happened to me, for I have realized by what power it came. And then President Woodruff concludes with these words. I refer to these things because I want you to get the same spirit. All the elders of Israel, whether abroad or at home, need that spirit. This is the spirit that we must have to carry out the purposes of God on the earth. We need that more than any other gift. We are in the midst of enemies, in the midst of darkness and temptation, and we need to be guided by the Spirit of God. We should pray to the Lord until, until we get the Comforter. This is what is promised to us when we are baptized. It is the spirit of light, of truth, and of revelation, and can be with all of us at the same time. Developing spirituality and attuning ourselves to the highest influences of godliness is not an easy matter. It takes time and frequently involves a struggle. It will not happen by chance, but is accomplished only through deliberate effort and calling upon God and keeping His commandments. The Apostle Paul spent much of his life teaching and encouraging spirituality in the then far-flung missions of the world. He frequently used terminology from the sports games, and athletic contests. He said that a saint successfully keeping the commandments is like an athlete winning his contest. That, comp that comparable degrees of training, exertion, obedience to the rules, self-discipline, and the will to win are involved. To the Corinthians, he wrote words which paraphrased are to this effect. You know, do you not, that at the sports all the runners run the race, though only one wins the prize. Like them, run to win. Now every athlete goes into strict training when they do it to win a per they do it to to win a perishable wreath, but our wreath will last forever. For my part, I run with a clear goal before me. Along this same line, he said to Timothy, his beloved young missionary uh, friend and missionary companion, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Taking the athletic contest to what was in ancient times the ultimate experience, a hand-to-hand -hand battle to the death, Paul writes this statement regarding such physical combat. Put on the whole armor of God, said Paul, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, 
which is the word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The prophet Joseph Smith did not speak in such athletic or military terms, but he has given us perhaps the clearest statement of all on the need to become spiritual, as well as the time and patience which we must recognize are part of the process. The prophet Joseph Smith said, we consider that God has created a man with a mind capable of instruction and a faculty which may be enlarged in proportion to the need and diligence given to the light communicated from heaven to the intellect, and that the nearer man approaches perfection, the clearer are his views and the greater his enjoyments till he has overcome the evils of his life and lost every desire for sin, and like the ancient, arrives at that point of faith where he is wrapped in the power and glory of his Maker and is caught up to dwell with him. But we consider that this is a station to which no man ever arrived in a moment. Part of our difficulty as we strive to acquire spirituality is the feeling that there is much to do and that we are falling far short. Perfection is something yet ahead for every one of us, but we can capitalize on our strengths. Begin where we are and seek after the happiness that can be found in pursuing the things of God. We should remember the Lord's counsel, Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing, for ye are laying the foundation of a great work, and out of small things proceedeth that which is great. Behold, the Lord requireth the heart, and a willing mind, and the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land of Zion in these last days. It has always been encouraging to me that the Lord said, It is the willing and obedient who shall eat the good of the land of Zion in these last days. I suppose some of us would be discouraged and give up if it were otherwise. The prophet Joseph Smith said, Happiness is the object and design of our existence and will be the end thereof if we pursue the path that leads us leads to it. And this path is virtue, uprightness, faithfulness, holiness, and keeping all the commandments of God. The place to begin is here, and the time to start is now. The length of our stride need be but one step at a time. God, who has designed our happiness, will lead us along even as little children and we will, by that process, attain perfection. None of us has attained perfection or the zenith of spiritual growth that is possible in mortality. Every person can and must make spiritual progress. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the divine plan for that spiritual growth eternally. It is more than a code of ethics. It is more than an ideal social order. It is more than positive thinking about self-improvement and determination. The gospel is the saving power of Jesus Christ with his priesthood and sustenance and with the Holy Spirit. With faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and obedience to his gospel, a step at a time, improving as we go, pleading for strength, improving our attitudes and our ambitions, we will find ourselves successfully in the fold of the Good Shepherd. That will require discipline and training and exertion and strength. But as the Apostle Paul said, 
I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Modern day revelation makes this promise. Put your trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good. Yea, to do justly, to walk humbly, to judge righteously. And this is my spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you of my spirit which shall enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. And then shall ye know, or by this shall ye know, that all things whatsoever ye desire of me, which are pertaining unto things of righteousness, in faith believing in me that ye shall receive. May we follow the counsel to so labor and so live as to obtain the Spirit of God. I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.